Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to tonight's special hearing. Uh, just a couple of days before New Year's Eve, and I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas and a safe one at that, and thank you for coming tonight. If you do have cell phones, I ask you to please turn them off so they don't make any noise or play any funny Christmas songs that we've already heard enough of. <laughs> right, so, all right, so with that being said, Ms. Burner, will you call the roll? Mayor Lowry. Here. Councilman Chammy. Here. Councilwoman Hopkins. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Cobb. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Seven members present. Thank you, ma'am. And tonight's invocation will be by Vice Mayor Lindsay. If you would bow your half heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you again. Once again this year, Father, to do this business of the city, Father. Lord, we pray that this will be a, a uh, orderly meeting. Father, we ask you to, to protect our police officers, our fire department, our military, and everyone on this council and our administration. In Jesus' name we pray, Father. Amen. Amen. And the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank Alrighty. Actions on minutes, none. Communications, none. See manager's report, none. Comments from members of the public. Uh, any comments from the public before we. Man. Yes, please, to the podium. And your name and address, if you will, please. Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice Drive. Uh, I didn't know about this meeting until Christmas Eve. I talked to Judy at church. And I have never been so disgusted and angry and hurt and disappointed in this council in my life. And I just can't imagine bringing all this junk up again. I can't, I don't know anybody more than Mike Lowry that's done more for this community in the short time that I've lived here. And I, I'm just near tears. I, I just, I don't know what to say. Except you guys ought to be ashamed of yourselves, that's for sure. It's just disgusting. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? I don't live in the city limits. We'll need your address, please. My address is 2642 Quail Ridge Drive, but I'm very connected with the city. Oh, I'm sorry, name, I thought you'd said it. My name is Kathy Spencer. Thank you. Um, I've been in this community since I was 10, and I look around this room and there's no one in this room that has done as much for this city as Mike Lowry. And you guys should be ashamed of yourself. Very much so. This backbiting is ridiculous and it needs to stop. We need to remember how important our town is instead of all this bull crap. And I really hope you think about it. Because I work hard in this city, he works hard in this city, and we need to Bring the city together instead of tearing it apart. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, so thank you very much. All right, we will move on to, and I don't have it printed out, so I apologize. Um, I'm gonna go to our, this is our city attorney, Jake Jeffries. I'm gonna jump back to his email real quick. Just, um, I should have printed out, but my printer's out of ink. So um, what we'll do is, as long as council doesn't see a problem with it, we'll, um, um, he suggested that um, opening statements be made by um, our, you know, the ones who were initially involved, myself, Mr. Shammy, and was you on that list as well? Okay, so Mr. Shammy, because he had made the initial uh, motion. So with that being said, I guess we will do opening statements as you suggested. Okay. So Mr. Shammy, the floor is yours, sir. All right, thank you. Good evening. I want to go through a timeline of events, if I may. Mr. Lowry had not paid his taxes and had a tax lien on his property from the <coughs> accusation of the past mayor. Okay. Mr. Lowry paid his taxes as of February of this year. That's correct, right? Is it February of this year? You tell me. It's right, your okay. research, not mine. Okay, cool. 
<laughs> Mr. Lowry still has a tax lien from the state. I did find out through research that that tax lien, they don't tell you about it, okay? And they would have to go and take care of that with uh, common pleas. I just want to let everybody know, it seems like the council has a bias towards Mr. Lowry. It has been proven on social media and council to be true. I know the outcome of this meeting and uh, I know how the hearing will turn out. And that's really all I have to say. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Yep. Um, okay, so I'll go with my state. Wait, was that, well, let me go that's kind of opening and closing. Cut. Okay, okay, good. Because I know he'd mentioned there, you know, then we would do our opening statements, then present any evidence we had. So I didn't know if you still had stuff to present. No, I'm done. Okay, okay. So I'll present my opening statement. Uh, I don't know how many of you had watched the, the council meeting. Uh, and when he'd made his motion and Mr. Lindsay had seconded, I, you know, I truly had no clue what he was talking about. I mean, I'm sitting there thinking, holy cow, what did I forget to do that I, you know. So, uh, you know, so after the meeting adjourned, you know, we, we all hung out for a few minutes and I went home and, April, what did we forget to do? So, uh, you know, we pulled up our, you know, we pulled up our online state tax thing because I'd seen that Mr. Shammy had submitted a, uh, like a, a court judgment on my state taxes, which is exactly what it was. So that's, that's, um, you know, that's how we ended up, basically. So um, I'll bounce back. If you don't have anything else to present, then I will just present just to prove that. Okay. So I did. I only did three packets. Um, please pass that down to Mr. Jeffries, please. And then if you guys want to pass this around, I wasn't going to print out like a million sheets because we. You, yeah, I didn't have ink. And then I'll go through this one. So page, you know, page. Wait a minute. Hang on. Let's see. Which, Jake, hand me that one. Switch me. I had some extra notes in there. That's 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 mine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank you. I have extra notes in this one. Okay. So, let me hear. So, page one, if anybody's looking at it, page one is the letter that I received um, in 2018. Basically, it says that the state recalculated my 2015 taxes. They said, it's not that I didn't file them or I didn't pay them, it just, they weren't calculated, right? There was a mistake, uh, and that was not long after we stopped going to, uh, to one of the local tax services just because we wanted to save ourselves some money. And obviously it didn't work out too well. <laughs> we made a mistake. So anyways, page one says, you know, here's your 2015 taxes. We are recalculating them. You owe X amount of dollars down at the bottom. You guys can see it. And you know, with, with taxes, I don't know how many of you've made mistake, mistakes on taxes, but it's a, oh, yes, you can, yes. You can, I mean, everybody makes mistakes on taxes. So anyway, so with that being said, it was like 1,200 and some dollars. I ain't gonna lie, I'm not rich. I didn't have $1,200 sitting in my bank account to pay. Uh, taxes you can't make payments on. State taxes you can't make payments. They'll accept them, but even if you're making $200 payments, they keep going with their legal processes. So I didn't get it paid off until uh, you know February of 18, and I actually overpaid, and they sent me a statement saying that I had overpaid them by $128.30. And at the bottom, thank you for your cooperation, uh, your cooperation with this matter. Um, there's that, I don't know if you guys got it. And then page three, this is what I screenshot that night after the meeting. It was from my state web, you know, from the state uh, website where you can bring up all your files. And there's all my taxes that I've filed and paid. No, you know, at the very top, no money is owed to anybody. Um, it, it goes from 2001 to 2018. And it scared me for a minute because I was like, why does it go from 2001 to 2010? I'm like, holy smokes, I, I know I, I filed and paid my taxes for those nine years. So I called them and they said that the system will eventually start uh, archiving some of your files, but you know, they said, you're, you're good to go. There's no problems there. So, uh, and then with, I'll say the help of Mr. Shammy's motion, I had no clue that I had a, uh, you know, this uh, judgment against me. I never knew it went that far. Uh, so, you know, we called the Clark County. They said, yeah, you have to get a letter from the state tax saying that, that your, your, your taxes have been satisfied. Mm -hmm. They resent me a new letter, basically a copy of the one they'd sent out last February. And I took it to the courthouse, and it was, you know, it was, it was paid over about a year ago. So uh, that's all I really got. I mean, it was just a simple mistake. I, you know, I'm not going to get up here and sit and, you know, argue and, and try to make scenes. Thank you, scenes or anything. I mean, I just, you know, 
if, it, if it's a, you know, if taxes are paid and they're filed and you make a mistake, I don't think it's really a, it's a big offense. I mean, as long as you're doing what you're supposed to do and trying to get it done. I mean, I, I've, I've talked to a few people in the past few days have stopped me, hey, what's going on? It gets really old talking about taxes. It's not even tax season yet, but, um, you know, so, uh, I'm not going to say which business, but a big business owner told me today that he missed 60 cents on his taxes one year. 60 cents short on his taxes. And by the time they caught it and found it, he owed like $700. So it's ridiculous. I mean, this, you know, they're in the business to make money off of us. So, uh, but that's, that's my case and that's all I really have. So thank you for the time. And um, Mr. Shaman, did you have anything else? Before we move forward, I'll just, I'll just kind of, okay. Well then I'll just, I'll, um, let's go down the line. Anybody has any questions for me or anyone else really? Ms. Eggleston? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. In light of the documents you showed and I'm just going to move to, to uh, I don't know how to phrase it. Uh, let me think for a minute. To, uh, the year's almost over. No, we, we've still got a couple of days here. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Jeffries, mm -hmm. what word am I looking for? Uh, well, I don't see anything in the charter about dismissing this once a motion's been filed. I think a motion could be withdrawn, though. Um, some mm, not effect. sure about that. Mr. Mayor. Uh, before you make, I don't know what you're going to say. Well, it doesn't matter. You're fine now. Okay, well, I just, if anyone, I don't want to end the meeting before anyone else no, has it. Okay. <laughs> Sir. I'm not going to end the meeting. Gotcha. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor. Sir. I call for a vote. Okay. <clears throat> that will put this to bed. Second. Okay. Do you second it? Uh, sure. Yes. 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 The motion you have. Yes. Point point of order. We already have a motion on the table, if I remember right. Well, I think that he's just. doesn't get voted on. I think he's just calling to get the ball rolling to get the vote done. You got anything else, Mr. Cook? Nothing else. Okay. okay. Ma'am? Okay. Mayor Lowry? Um, well, I'm staying. Maybe. <laughs> you, 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 well, I guess you can't stay. <laughs> Councilman Shammy? What did you say? Yeah, make sure you explain what we're voting on. Okay, we are voting. We're voting, voting to, to remove to or re not remove me. <laughs> we are voting on the motion to remove Mayor Lowry from Council. I'm satisfied with this paperwork. So no. Okay. Councilman. No. Okay. Councilwoman Eggleston. Councilman Cobb. No. Councilman Cook. No. No. Vice Mayor Lindsay. No. All right. Mr. Mayor. Sir. There's no other business before this council. I want to speak. She has a question. <laughs> Am I allowed? She's just speak? about too late. Call you. <laughs> what? I know people got up there and said how horrible the council is and stuff, but I sat out, out here month after month and watched people harass other mayors of the city that really tried to do good. And I know them personally, but people only see one side, they only see one thing, and I hope all this is over now. And I hope everybody in the audience will let the past go. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much, ma'am. Um, and the motion failed, zero to seven. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, I'll just go down the line. Ms. Eggleston, do you have anything? I think starting in 2020, we have a new council and we are setting up a donuts and coffee with your council on the Saturday after the new council is sworn in. And I hope that the citizens will come and meet know, the new council so that we can make improvements in 2020. I see nothing but good coming to the city. All right, thank you. Mr. Chairman, you didn't have anything else? No. Okay, Mr. Cook, anything else, sir? I will have to echo what Peggy has said. I think this next two years 
you're going to see a dramatic change in the council and in the way we do business. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Cobb. We, everybody's had differences in the past, but we've got to start uniting and working as one. We represent these people sitting right out here. And the bickering among ourselves has got to stop. Absolutely. I, mean, I said absolutely. I mean, you know, it, it's just got to cease and we got to go on and start representing the city like we were elected to do. Thank you, sir. Um, I'll just add one more just to kind of echo off what they said. You know, and Amy, you've touched it. And we all know it. We're not idiots. Um, I mean, there's been a ton of friction over the years. And there's, I'm sure there was friction back when you guys were younger and there was different people on council. You know, the whole thing has changed a lot with social media. And, I, I you know, I can't stand mm -hmm. social media. I mean, I use it, but it really it, it makes the town look worse than what it is. And it, it needs to stop, regardless if it's about council or a police department or, you know, Joe Schmo that lives on the corner of, you know, Maine and whatever. It, um, yeah, it's, um, it's actually embarrassing. It is. And I mean, I'm I not, mean, and I'm not saying anyone's perfect. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I've made my share of mistakes as well as anybody. But, you know, think about that. You know, when someone comes to Nucleau for the first time, say they just for example, let's say they come to the ball dropper a car show or something that you know you guys put on and then they say okay well this was a great event let me go home and look up new carlisle on their facebook holy cow i am not going near that town um i just you know i just think as adults every one of us could step back and look and say could we better ourselves the way we handle ourselves or professionally you know, you know socially absolutely not not a single one of us couldn't do better or out there so um but with that being said you know I, I just I look forward to hopefully seeing the town continue to move forward, you know, whether it's new council members, old council members, uh, you know, new people that move in to help pick up some of these events that, uh, you know, the farmer's market and thing, I, you know, we've got a lot of good things going on in town. We need to keep it moving forward. And then Mr. Shaney is going to say something. It, it, it's very embarrassing what I see on social media. And um, I'm not going to point out names. Everybody's seen it. And uh, I was called corrupt, all these, all sorts of, you, know, you call me names and stuff like that, yell at me. I really don't care. I really don't. I'm a, I'm a tough guy. But at the end of the day, it's all about the town. It's all about us. We, we live together, guys. We need to work together. We need to work. The council needs, we all need to work in this room. Because we have to make this a better place to live. Unfortunately, being from Texas, I have to live here now, and that's Dawn's ball. She brought me up here. <laughs> My wife brought me up here. All right. With that means one more thing. Ms. Hopkins. This is the last meeting for Vice Mayor Lindsay and Council Member Shammy. And I want to thank you for all your hard work and all your effort in the past four years. We really appreciate it. Mr. Vice Mayor. I only have a short comment based off of other comments you said tonight. To listen to some of these comments, you would swore up and down that this council, previous councils, hasn't done a thing in the last four years for this city. And I beg to differ with whoever has that mindset or that thought. When I ran for council in 15, we was down to one police officer. Thanks to, for lack of a better word, budget cuts, lack of money. We didn't have the money. I ran that police levy. I was successful in the voters agreeing with my thoughts and what I said to employ the deputies that we have now. This council, the last council meeting, I believe it was, just passed a ordinance to put on a fifth deputy in, and I think it's going to happen in January, but that's up to the uh, city manager, administration, and sheriffs and their contracts and everything that goes into that to when that deputy will start. Five deputies in this town is still not enough. We only have approximately $500,000 
from a half a percent income tax, which a lot of people complain about that. They're still complaining about that. But without these deputies we have, that this council did, and, and the last council did, we would have more chaos in this town than we currently have. Now the last crime rates I've seen, they're down. Am I correct, deputy? The, we don't have the break-in and enterings that we used to have. We don't have the assaults that we used to have. Although this time of year, they always come back for whatever reason. Our town is a lot better now than it was in 2015. It was two couples away from being in Fisco Watch. You don't want the state coming in here and dictating to us, this council, the administration, and most of all the citizens, what they're going to do. Because they have the power to levy whatever taxes that is needed to get the city out of Fisco Watch and make it, for lack of a better word, profitable. Although the city is not in the business of making money. But kind of it is. Without money, it cannot run the many luxuries that our citizens have that people use every day and they fail to realize the city tax dollars pays to keep this stuff running. You know, our fire department is paying cash for stuff now. Again, thanks to the citizens and the hard work of this council to promote the passage of that levy. We're paying cash for things. That has never happened in the history of this city, to my knowledge. That everybody wanted to go in debt. There's a lot of things to be happy about this city that this council and the previous council has accomplished. Agreed. We could not have done it without the citizens, the taxpayers. So for people to say that, you know, uh, insinuate, we haven't done anything. We've done a lot. And I hope this city continues to grow. I hope this city never sit, even gets close to Fisco Watch again. It is not a good thing for a city to do that. It looks bad on the council, the administration, and quite honestly, every person that lives in town. We actually need it. I was figuring the other day, was talking to some uh, uh, high-ranking officials in the sheriff's office. This city actually needs minimum nine people to run 24-7 and still cover days off. We're still four deputies short of that minimum that we need for 24-7. So we're still gonna have some blank areas. Hopefully they don't get published. It doesn't take an Einstein to figure out what days the deputies ain't working, what hours they're not here. And correct me if I'm wrong, sir, uh, deputy, when we do not have deputies working, is there, a spike in crime or not in this town. I don't know one way or the other, but I do know that the criminal element knows when we do not have deputies in this town. And the closest one's 45 minutes away. I'll answer that question as to, I'm not gonna say that there's a spike, but I will say that there's a delay in the response time okay. for the deputies to get there when, versus being in the city, versus being in the area of one car where I could be at the other end of the county in area one and take the 45 minutes, minutes, either, 40 minutes unless you're running up. Well, in area one, there just no, be no more than 10 to 15 minutes in okay. area one. We're not talking over in area five on the other side of Springfield. But no, it, 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 it just makes an increase in the response time if, if we're not here in the city. Okay, thank you. So I wish the city well. I wish all of you well. I wish all of you a happy new year. If you go out on the 31st, which is tomorrow night, I believe, to, to uh, see the ball drop, uh, if you go out drinking and partying, find somebody to drive you, please. We don't need any more deaths due to people driving intoxicated, either alcohol or other. And if there's nothing else to be said, Mr. Mayor, I move we adjourn. Second. Thank you, Tom.